What's up everybody and thank you for joining me for another video. My name is Wack4863, but you can call me Wack. The other day in the live stream, we were talking about the dedicated servers that I run and people were asking me how to get them set up. So I thought today would be a good day to upload a video showing you how to get your own dedicated server. Now, if for some reason you find that a dedicated server isn't the right fit for you, there is a referral link in the description of this video for you to go over and purchase a server from G Portal at a 5% discount. So jumping right into it, you want to come to the Funcom forums and just click the search button and you'll see I have a dedicated server already typed in there. We're just going to search that. Now I am going to put a link to that in the description of this video so you don't actually have to search it. You can just click that link from the description of the video. Once you get here, what you want to do is just scroll down to the installation section and you're going to want to pick which version you want to install. Right now, the current official version and the latest a test beta version are both the same. Now, if you have a problem clicking on it and getting it to download, what you could do is just right click and open a new tab and you can see it downloads right away. Now, there's a lot of really good information in this post about how to get it set up. I'm going to try to cover the basics in this video, but if you're having issues, definitely refer to this post. And if that doesn't answer your issues, go ahead and leave those questions that you have about it in the comment section of this video and I'll do my best to help you out. Now, I definitely recommend moving this to its own file folder. It is going to expand. It's going to have some other files that it creates once you select this program. So definitely move it to a permanent location on your computer. Don't leave it in your downloads folder. Now, this is what the dedicated server launcher looks like once you start it up. And there's some options that you're going to want to go in and possibly change to set your server up the way that you want it. First thing is the live branch or the test live branch here. You can play either one of those. The user should always remain anonymous. Just leave that the way that it is. Validating server installation is a good thing to do because that's going to keep your server healthy and up to date. And then this auto update on restart is really nice as well. That way you don't have to worry about ever updating your dedicated server when a mod gets updated or when the game gets updated. Now under server name, you're gonna have to pick a really cool server name, whatever you wanna name it, we can, we can spell too. But pick a really cool server name. That's what people are gonna see when they're searching through servers in Conan Exile. Next, you could decide if you want a server password or not. So if you want it password protected, where people have to join a Discord to get that password, you can simply put whatever password in there you want. And then an admin password, I highly recommend you don't use one, two, three, four, like I do on a regular basis, but that is for you to decide. And I highly recommend putting a admin password on there. Next is going to be the mod list. And what you actually need for the mod list is the number from the mod. So if you go on Steam and you select the mod that you want, let's say Hosev's UI mod is what you're gonna be using. If you click the share button, it's going to give you a list of numbers at the end end of that share. What you want to do is copy that. So for instance, I already have the mod number for Hosev's UI mod, and I can just paste that right in there. Now, if I'm adding other mods, I just need to put a comma and then choose the next mod number, and I can place that in there. Now, this is your mod load order. So this would be one, this would be two. If I added another mod, that would be three, so on and so forth. You can then choose the location of your server and it has Europe, North America, Asia, Australia, South America, and Japan. That's going to help people decide whether they're going to have a good connection to your server or not. The maximum player count can be changed here, so go ahead and do that should you want to. The Archon, the Anti-Cheat, the Discord, I don't use any of those things, so I'm not going to go in depth on how to set any of those up, but play around with it. You can figure it out. I'm sure there's lots of great information on the forums on how to set those things up. Backup and automation, you definitely wanna have a backups running and you're just gonna pick a folder location and then a, a number of days if you want those files to be overwritten or deleted after a certain amount of time. Moving down here, we have which map we want to start up on. So we can play on the Exiled Lands or if you have the Isle of Sipta DLC, you can select that as well. 
Moving over here, we have daily restarts. Now, I do recommend if you're going to run this all the time, set up some daily restarts. So this would be 6 a.m. for the first restart. You can then say minimum uptime of, say, 12 hours. And total restarts of two would mean that the server would restart at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Start server if not running. I don't recommend clicking this. I personally like to have a little bit more control over it. If you want to select this where it auto restarts that's perfectly fine it's going to depend on your application of it but this is going to restart the server if it's not running this program does have to be up in order for that function to work and then in here you can set all your warning messages so that people know that there's a restart coming so 10 minutes five minutes two minutes and let them know hey the server's restarting in 10 server's restarting in five server's restarting in two minutes you can also set it up to ping a Discord if you want to. That's going to be right here where it actually lets people know on Discord that X is happening. So you have ready, restarted, and shut down. For the performance, I usually just leave these settings the way they are right here. Yours are going to be a little bit different depending on your PC. So you may only have four cores. You may have no cores. You may have 63 cores. I don't know. It's going to depend on your PC, but I usually don't change any of those settings. Now, if you're setting this up on a PC that you're going to play the game on and have the dedicated server on, you need to select this multi-home. Just click that and then you're going to click this select button and it's going to autofill your IP address in there. The next thing that you're going to want to do is do your port forwarding here. So currently this port forwarding, only this one would work if I click the test port button. So what I have to do is either change this port to what I have it already set up at, or I have to go in my router and set up those ports to forward properly. For this, I'm just going to change the ports that I want it set up to. And if I test again, it's going to say that all three are good. Now, once you have all these settings set properly in here, you need to make sure you click the save changes button just like that. And then what's going to happen the first time is it's going to actually download everything that you need for the game. So it'll have a Steam command black box pop up and it's going to download all the files in order for you to run the dedicated server. This will also happen when you have updates to the game or updates to mods. All those things are going to happen before it launches the server and it's going to download and automatically install all of that stuff. So once you get the mods downloaded, the game downloaded, all the updates downloaded, your server is automatically going to start and you can search for your server on the game. You can also direct connect from your own system by using this IP address and this port, or you could do it remotely by using the IP address here that I have censored and this port as well. And there you can see we have a really cool server name listed right there. Or you could direct connect and the way you would do that is put the IP address in and then a colon and then the port number after it. Now, something that a lot of people ask me about is how I use the same game save file for all of the things that I do across my test live, across my live. So what you're going to want to do is just click this button here. That's going to open up this window. Now, all you need to do is go back to saved. This is where your game save file is. So 216 kilobyte, that would be a brand new save file. So you're just gonna have to navigate to wherever your save file is for your solo game or another dedicated server, whatever you're using, and you just wanna paste that file right in here. It's gonna say it already exists. Do you wanna replace it? Yes, I do. And you can see it's replaced by a file that is 10,680 kilobytes. The final thing that I'm going to show you real quick is my setup for the port forwarding. Now, this may be the more difficult part for some people to get figured out. You have to have a, some tech savvy ability to do this and you may have a different router. So it's probably going to be different than what I'm going to show you, but I'll show you mine and then hopefully that helps you figure out how to do your own router. So I already have them in here. So I'm going to edit service. You would be adding a service, but if we go 
in and edit service. Once this page pops up, the important things is that your protocol is set to TCP UDP and that you have all three of those ports from the dedicated server launcher in this port forwarding. The internal IP address is going to be the same IP address as your multi-home. You're then going to save that and go out, and then you can test the ports to see if you got it set up right. And there is some additional documentation on the dedicated server launcher post on the official forums. So I do recommend getting over there, reading that and seeing what's going on there. That may help you as well. Again, all I can show you is what I have set up and your setup is probably going to be different. So I hope that helps you get your own dedicated server set up. Like I said, if you don't want to use a dedicated server and you still want to have a server, you can use a G portal. My referral link is in the description of this video and that will save you a 5% on a server. And that's all I have for this video, but the fun doesn't have to stop here. You can pick one of the other videos coming up on the screen to watch next. I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed making it. I'll catch you next time. Peace. The whack moments in this video were sponsored by my legendary supporters. Thank you very much. If you'd like to sponsor a future whack moment, you can click the button below that says join. That'll give you all the details. I'd like to thank all my subscribers for their continued support, likes, comments, and general awesomeness. If you're not subscribed, you can start your free trial today and cancel at any time. And if you're not finished watching, there's two videos to pick from.